Welcome friends to a review of a Bentley Flying Spur with the W12 engine. This vehicle produces 626 horsepower and 664 pounds-feet of torque. And a special thank you to Bentley of High Point, North Carolina for giving me this opportunity to review this automobile. This is the oldest and most experienced Bentley dealership in the United States. And if you would like to work with them, I will have Chris Rivas and his phone number on the screen for you to check out as well as in the description box. And with that established, let's go ahead and let's get this vehicle out on the road. All right, so this is a very special model of the Flying Spur because it comes with that twin turbo W12 engine. And 2024 seems to be the last model year that you can get the W12 engine. What I'm checking out here is a 2022 model year. Now when car and driver tested both the V8 and the W12 models, they both did zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. And it's true, I've driven a lot of these new Bentleys with the V8 engine, and that's genuinely all you need. Those engines are tuned and calibrated perfectly. There is no lag, and the V8 also sounds really good, and it does match the character of these automobiles. So why then do you need the W12? Well, it's going to be for the noise, of course. Now, this model I'm checking out here, it weighs about 5,300 pounds. If you go with the V8 model, that's gonna shave 200 pounds, pretty much all from the nose of this vehicle. So the V8 would weigh about 5,100 pounds. And yeah, when you step on it, the W12, it's got colossal amounts of thrust, like you would expect out of a vehicle with this type of power output and it does sound good but as mentioned before so does the v8 over the years they've done a phenomenal job in calibrating both of these engines the only real con i'm noticing with this setup is there does seem to be a bit more lag with the w12 but it does offer more thrust once the boost kicks in so out on the highway you're really going to be flying in this because you're going to gain so much more top end power this car is about 209 inches long total and when you sit in the vehicle, the overall driving position, it's really good. And you feel like you're operating a very wide vehicle. So that is a sensation that you get. But I just wish with the driving position, you could see that B logo on the hood a bit better. I would have to push my seat up a bit more to see that emblem a bit clearer. Anyway, that's a small gripe. Yeah, I appreciate the way these Bentleys hide their, uh, their mass and their size. Despite this curb weight, you feel like you're whipping something much lighter. And as you would expect, the ride quality is smooth, even with these 22 inch wheels. I prefer driving it in the B mode. That's the best balance. And surprisingly in this vehicle, there's not a substantial difference between comfort and B. But when you put the vehicle into its sport mode, there is no longer a lag with this machine. So sport mode is great. I don't notice the engine sounding more throaty. It still sounds the same, but the reaction has improved dramatically. And you notice the suspension tightening up ever so slightly. No matter what mode you're in, you don't really feel the bumps. You just hear them being translated into the cabin. And the reality is you can get a very similar driving experience in something like an S-Class Mercedes or even in a Porsche Panamera. But as I always mention in my other Bentley videos, once you start getting the top tier engines with the Mercedes or with Porsche, they're pushing $200,000, much like these Bentleys. So the CPO W12, it's about $200,000 and that comes with a one year warranty but you can pay 11 grand to extend that warranty for an additional two years. So yeah, it's a no brainer for me. I would rather buy into the Bentley brand than pay 200 grand for, you know, a top tier S-Class or a Maybach or a turbo Porsche. I would much rather rock a Bentley. Or if you went with a lightly spec'd brand new V8 model, that can be had for about 220 250 something along those lines but overall is this a special driving experience 
I mean, yeah, it's like the typical flagship luxury car experience you would expect from other brands, but you get more sonorous engines when you buy into the Bentley brand. And that's one of the reasons why I prefer Bentley's W12 compared to Rolls-Royce's V12 engine, primarily because this is more immersive and I get it, Rolls-Royce is a brand that's not trying to be immersive at all, but I'm just saying this is the driving experience that I personally prefer. Okay, no matter what car I'm driving, I appreciate a nimble experience and especially out in heavy traffic, you don't feel stressed when you drive this car. It's very easy to place it out on the road. I would say it's just the rear visibility that's a bit constricted when you look back. The C pillars and even the B pillars, it's kind of restricting your view a bit. But other than that, the view out the front, not an issue. And the mirrors are doing a good job as well when you drive this car. There's also no fatigue with the steering as well. It's perfectly weighted and it doesn't really change no matter what mode you put it in. So once again, the steering is also contributing to the ease of driving and we do have the most advanced suspension technology that you can imagine right you have the four corner air suspension and because we have such high-tech suspension technology i wish some of the smaller bumps could have been ironed out a bit better i feel like there's another level in which they could have tuned the suspension to iron out some of the smaller bumps and to reduce the audible impacts that you get over some of the bumps as well now some of that could also be fixed by swapping out the tires we have some Pirelli P0s with this vehicle. I've noticed a lot of Bentleys come with Pirelli P0s. I would personally like to get a Continental tire and that would iron things out a bit more, I feel like. But the machine is absolutely quiet though. No real wind noise and tire noise as you would expect because we do have really thick double pane glass and all of that good stuff. So I think we get the point. Fast comfortable, stylish driving machine. Handles great for its size. So let's go ahead and let's transition into this interior segment now. All right, now that we are stopped, let's go ahead and let's talk about another big highlight regarding these Bentley vehicles, and that is their interior space. This is what really sets this brand apart from generic luxury car rivals. It's the way this brand implements the leather, the stitching, the metal work, as well as the wood trimmings. It is perfectly executed. There's so much for your eyes to behold and to take in. I think Bentley has some of the best quilted leather work out there for the seats and the seats are always really comfortable with these cars so much support there's never any fatigue you get all of the heated cooling and even the massage functions as standard with these vehicles and i would say this interior space is one notch above even the bentega because the bentega had some plastic buttons this has a much better finish regarding your seat controls and your infotainment controls as well this is very similar to the continental interior space so i love that but every bentley has a phenomenal wafting aroma of the leather when you step inside and even though this is a certified pre-owned model with about 17,000 miles on it this still has that nice aroma of leather well done there and you know what surprisingly Bentley is one of the only cars where I don't mind the piano black finish. In every other car, I'm not a big fan, but here it looks great. It matches the black on black theme of this car really well. So this is a pretty desirable spec right here. But I will say in the center console where you're going to be placing your phone, it is slightly scratched up in that area because it's kind of a high traffic piano black area. So that's the only place where you notice some um, type of a scuffing but the rest of the piano black is perfect really beautiful glossy finish without any smudging or dust particles showing up i have no idea how they managed to do that but it's great steering wheel is another great thing to interact with i like the shape and the size the metal paddle shifters are great as well infotainment screen is quick to respond it's elegantly implemented into the dash here and much like the continental this is a three-sided screen. You press the screen button and it will swivel out of the way to show you some beautiful gauges. So I love that. But the screen quality, the black levels for both the infotainment and for the 
gauge cluster is excellent, really high quality displays here. But we do have here the optional Bang & Olufsen audio system, not the top of the line name. I wish I could test out the name audio system with these Bentleys, but I have tested the pure bass audio systems with a lot of these Bentleys and they sound great. And I will say this Bang & Olufsen, it's about a $7,000 option. This also sounds very similar to the pure bass audio systems. This is only a marginal upgrade over the bass audio system that they offer. If you're gonna pay up money for a Bentley audio system, I would rather pay nine grand and get the top of the line name. In fact, I don't really understand why they offer this middle setup. They should either offer this Bang & Olufsen as the new base audio, and then they should just have the name on top. That's how they should do it in my opinion. But either way, no matter which system you go with, they're all gonna sound good. It has a nice sound signature to it. The clarity, the bass, all of it is there. You also have dual sunroofs with these vehicles. And now let's go ahead and let's talk about the rear seats. As you would expect, I have plenty of space to sit back there. I am five foot 11, getting in and out of this sedan, no problem. And I can certainly stretch out in the rear of this vehicle. The seat quality continues. You still have the same beautiful stitching and piping as well in the back. And all of that gives the black interior so much character. But anyway, the comfort continues, but I don't know, touching up against certain things like the center armrest, it doesn't have the same level of solidity that I feel in the front of the cabin. That could just be me, but that's just a subtle thing that I picked up on. Regardless, I do like to spend time back there and you have your own vanity mirrors as well. So you can check yourself out sitting in the back of the Bentley. But because the Mulsanne is no longer offered in the Bentley lineup, the extended wheelbase Bentega essentially takes the spot of the flagship chauffeur Bentley in the lineup. And I have tested that vehicle. I'm going to have a link to that in the description box below. And yeah, the extra legroom that the EWB Bentega has to offer is truly excellent. However, this flying spur is also great. After all, this is like 209 inches long total. So headroom and legroom, not an issue with the flying spur. The trunk is also a decent size. It's got a velvety carpet finish to it and it's a little over 14 cubic feet in size. So that's plenty practical, but you can't fold down the rear seats, of course, because they are electronically adjustable. Now, some final things I wanna mention, all of the useful safety tech features do come as standard with these Bentleys, like blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert. However, you do have to add in like a $9,000 touring package to get things like lane assist and night vision, as well as the heads up display. So. All of those things are included in the touring package and this particular flying spur is equipped with that touring package. So yeah, if I was equipping a Bentley for myself, I would definitely get the touring pack, the name audio, and like the nice diamond quilted leather interior space as well. Those are some of the must have features for me. But with that established, let's go ahead and let's conclude this review. All right, concluding thoughts on the Bentley Flying Spur W12. Beautiful automobile. These vehicles, they got redesigned in 2020, and I do appreciate the exterior swagger. Everyone is taking notice to the sedan out on the road, and the same design essentially continued throughout all the way up to 2024. And yeah, this W12 does sound nice, but because they've done a great job tuning and calibrating the v8 honestly at this point i don't really see the need for the w12 anymore unless you just want it it is a special vehicle and the last generation where you can get this engine for those purposes sure pull the trigger on one of these but i feel like they've probably quieted this w12 a little bit compared to the past that could be because of the epa regulations etc but it feels a bit muted compared to the past anyway it's still an amazing power plant that's not an issue. You still have a great nimble driving quality here. 
gorgeous interior space and I would totally rather rock a CPO Bentley than getting a brand new turbo Porsche or a top of the line S-Class and paying almost 200 grand for that. No way. I'm sticking with the Bentley brand for sure because you're buying into an exotic brand and you're getting a truly exquisite interior space. That being said though, a certain luxury car collector that likes to comment on my videos has told me that if you really want to buy a car where you feel the money when you drive it, you have to get the older Bentley Mulsanne or like a Rolls Royce Phantom. He told me that both of these vehicles actually feels like a step up compared to things like an S-Class or an Audi A8, etc. Whereas things like this Flying Spur feel very similar to an S-Class or an A8. Again, nothing wrong with that. This is still a top tier experience in terms of engine quietness and ride comfort. But if you want to take things to the next level, the Mulsanne was where it was at with the Bentley lineup. That being said, I don't really care. Nowadays, Benzes and Porsches are pushing 200 grand for their top models. So I still feel like in this market, the new Bentleys are still good value for money, all things considered. Anyway, that about does it for my review of the Flying Spur. Once again, special thank you to Bentley of High Point, North Carolina for providing me with this opportunity. I'm gonna have Chris Rivas and his information on the screen for you to check out. This dealership also has a brand new Flying Spur Edition 8 in their showroom. And they also have a 2018 Flying Spur for under $100,000, so you can check that out. And of course, if you want to custom order a Bentley, they are able to do that for you and they are able to ship nationwide as well. Also, if you're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, Chris Rivas does have a luxury car rental service where he has Lamborghini Urus, G63s, Bentleys, Rolls Royces, etc., that you can rent out. So I'm going to have Chris Rivas's exotic car rental business in the description box as well. He does not have a website right now. He just has an Instagram page. So I will have that linked in the description box as well. But thank you so much for watching this review. Take care and goodbye.